Okay, so our first intro video walks us through why we're going to do uh, such extensive processing that you'll see over the course of the next two or three videos. Um, this video is actually going to focus on the processing. So hopefully you made a data table with height on the x-axis or uh, left side and uh, the fall time on the y-axis or uh, right side of our data table. Uh, to get started, I'm going to go ahead and copy my data. Um, just this data right here. So I'm going to go over to a blank spreadsheet. Don't mind that line. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and paste. Uh, now you'll notice because of all that formatting and stuff in there, this looks a little weird. So I can go ahead and expand some of the columns just to make it a little bit easier for me to see what's going on. All right, next, what I'm going to do is I want to graph this. Um, now we're going to do multiple processes here. Our first uh, video is going to focus just on graphing uh, the basic data. Um, and then we're going to need to look at our data a little bit further and really analyze the relationship, which we'll get into linearization. And that will be the next video. Um, but before we get there, um, one thing to note is uh, when we paste data from a Google document, because of some weird thing about formatting, it always puts a blank uh, row up top. As long as you have everything line up, it's fine. It doesn't matter. You can delete that row if you want. You can leave it. It really doesn't matter as long as your data matches. Now, one thing to note is when I copied my data over, it went from 1.0 right here um, to 1. And that's because a spreadsheet is trying to round um, for us. It thinks it's making life easier, but we just want to tell it to stop rounding. So these two buttons up here. Um, will increase or decrease the number of decimal places and therefore you can, uh, you know, show this out to five sig figs if you want to, or show this down to one sig fig or whatever it is you need to show. Keep that in mind. Please present your data appropriately. Next step, we're going to graph. So I'm going to highlight my data right here. Uh, next, I'm going to go to inserts and then chart. In physics class, we are always going to use a scatter plot uh, because our goal is to try and write an equation that describes the entire universe. And the first step of that is to write an equation that describes our data. So that is the ultimate goal of physicists. They will keep trying for that to the end of time. Whether or not it is possible, we will see. Um, but for now, we're going to try and fit our data with an equation which requires us to do a scatter plot. Uh, so with that, we uh, are going to use chart type. Now, Google often will uh, do a suggested chart type. I recommend that you scroll down and choose scatter plot yourself. Um, often it has no effect, but occasionally there's something weird that's going on with Google, um, and this helps offset that. The other thing to note is you want to make sure that it uses your left hand column, if that's A, or maybe everything is like shifted over starting at B and C. Um, whatever your leftmost column of data is, you want to make sure that it's checked saying use that column as labels. Uh, now, if you have headers, uh, such as the uh, column titles right here, uh, you can make sure that it also says for you to be using that row as headers, um, but you can uncheck that if you don't have headers. That's fine. Um, but that, that is all getting into the uh, specific nitty gritty of stuff. A lot of times it works out okay. Next piece. We want to customize our, um, our uh, data table, uh, sorry, our graph here. Um, so I wanted to include a title that is long and descriptive. If it feels like you're writing a novel as your title, you're doing a good job. So in this case, uh, we are looking at, we always do Y versus X. So fall time uh, versus drop height uh, for a... Uh, was a 50 gram ball in Gizmos uh, free free fall lab. Again, super long and detailed, but anyone looking at this graph without reading the rest of your report would know what they were looking at. Now, I didn't include every single detail because there's a lot of info, um, but I'll include that later in my report. For now, this is the kind of major piece. The, the mass is probably more important than the size. Um, generally, assuming it's a smaller size. Next, we want to make sure we add in horizontal axis titles. Um, here we are going to use uh, height. Uh, you can say comma h to show the variable and then uh, slash to show uh, what the units are and the units are in meters. If you alternatively just said height do, 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 slash meters, that's fine. Or you type out meters, that's fine. You need what the variable is. 
and what the units are. Um, ideally, you also put uh, any other relevant information in there, but uh, not a big deal. Uh, all right, so next piece, vertical axis, we're gonna do the same thing, fall time um, is T, and then it's measured in seconds, and so I'm gonna delete the rest of that information right there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make these a little bit bigger for you to see, um, depending on what the size is of everything you're working with, you might need to do the same. Um, but if it's just for you, then you don't need to. Uh, I just want to make sure everyone can see what's going on with this video here. All right, I'm also going to make this a little bit bigger. Uh, cool, so we have our data. Um, now note that if you really need to reshape things, you can click on the data area and like expand this down or move this part sideways. So there's lots of features that you can change about this. Uh, but the next important piece is we're going to fit in a trend line. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I clicked on the data, so it opened up series, but you can also, right beneath chart and axis titles, just go to series. You click on series, you scroll down, we need to add in a trend line, but we also need to add in error bars. Now normally you would be using your maximum value minus your minimum value divided by two for repeated trials to figure out your uh, random error or uncertainty. Um, but because this is a simulation, all repeated trials will literally have the exact same value. So we're just going to use our instrumental uncertainty here. That is the 0.01. Um, so that will be our uncertainty. Uh, so I will go ahead and click in, do, 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 opening back that up. So you can also get there by going to clicking on it, going to edit. Uh, and then we're going to go down to series and we're going to add in error bars. Now it defaults to 10%. We want to change that to constant and we will say 0 0.01 because that was the value of our precision up here. That'll be our uncertainty. Notice that that uncertainty is extremely small and that's fine. Um, in fact, I can decrease the size of my data points here if I really want to see the size of the error bars. Um, but you don't necessarily need to. I'm actually gonna do that real fast just because I like to see my data points a little bit bigger. Cool, so we can see that the data points largely hide the error bars, but the error bars are kind of hidden right behind it. Now Google doesn't have the ability to do X error bars yet if you're using Excel or numbers or some sort of installed spreadsheet program on your laptop as opposed to a web browser version. Um, it should be able to do horizontal error bars and you can ask me later about how to do that. Um, but for now, what we can take a look at is see is that this straight line does not hit all of my data points or error bars. So that means that this is not a proper line of best fit, which tells me that I need to go down here to series and I need to tell it, okay, well, we're not going to use a linear line of best fit. So let's try something else. Now the order in which you should try things is linear, then you should go power, after that you should go uh, polynomial, and finally exponential is the order of things. If you do exponential then polynomial, that's fine. Both of them are actually very unlikely for most scenarios. So really it's going to be linear or power series 90% of the time. So we tried linear already, didn't work, so let's try power series. Oh look, that's hard. that seems to go through all my data points and or their error bars. So that is an appropriate line of best fit. Now notice I use the term line for both a straight line and a curve. Um, that, that's just how we work in IB. Uh, the term is uh, more universal. Last but not least, I need to show equation. So I go down to label and I say use equation. And we can see that our line or trend line um, is an equation of 0.451 times x to the or to the 0.5. So basically what we're looking at is 0.451 times the square root of x is the relationship. And so in the future, uh, or in the next video, we'll talk about how to prove that relationship a little bit better. Um, but for now, this is a good guidance point. Um, so again, this won't actually prove anything. Um, it, it's just Google fitting the best possible line to this as possible. Um, we need to go one step further to, uh, again, proving is actually not true in science, but we need to go one step further to provide a stronger argument for the relationship we think it is. Um, for right now, this is an arbitrary power that gives us a good guideline, much like our acceleration and velocity values 
gave us good guidelines in designing things. Um, uh, so we'll use that as a guidance, but we won't necessarily be able to rely on it per se. That's it for this first part. The goal is just to get you to your data being graphed. Next, we're gonna talk about how to linearize your data and actually show a relationship or a proportionality of sorts.